was me, working my way around the day. Just like seven billion other humans. And for a while now, I'm interested by the fact that we are only one species of animals, but there are millions of others. And I find them all very intriguing in their own way. So when you're interested in something, it's like a law that you see more and more about that subject everywhere you look. So I stumbled upon some interesting figures. Um, and there are um, on our Earth 50,000 species of vertebrates that are animals with a spine. But there are also 50,000 species of weevils. And weevils are like strange little beetles with a long snout. And when you Google on the word beevil, weevil, then you will find things like how to get rid of weevils, or how to prevent weevils from invading your home. So we don't like them very much. Uh, and there may be some annoying ones to us. But there are 50,000 species of weevils, so there must be something interesting there. And um, as a child, I've always been interested in this hidden world of little creatures. And I continued to do so when I went to art school. And I even took and collected the dead fly from the windowsill. And that's a bit strange, I admit it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But, and uh, even now, years later, I still uh, draw them. I took some examples, so you will believe me. <laughs> and I collect them. It is only a small port, part of my big collection. So, and when I try to look at their hidden world, I try to incorporate the things that I find there in my designs. And now you may think, okay, well, but I'm not a designer, so how does this affect me? Well, this story is not only about beetles. It's about more. It's about my belief that we are all, in a way, creators. And we give something to this world every day. And by doing that, we change the world a little bit every day. And it's also about my belief that the way we look affects the way we create. So what happens to our creations if we only see part of our world? And let's assume, let's pretend that there are two ways of looking, two worlds. And there's one that we all know, and it's easy to us to look at that world, and that there's another world that is more difficult to look at, that is hidden. And the last one we probably all remember from when we were a child, then we were in that world. And in this world, it's all about looking at small things. It's about not caring about functionality. It's about playing and changing perspective. But there's another world too. And this world is all about functionality. It's about efficiency. And it's about how everything can be measured. 
So I'm building a house right now with my husband for our family. And when I look at the design we're making for our house from that last perspective, some things are very important, like that it will be ready in a certain time and that it will be solid. We live in an area of earthquakes, so that's important. And that it stays within budget. And to me, it's important that it will be impressive, that people talk about it, that, people, that it's well received. So these are all very important aspects of our, the, the, the design of our house. But when we look in an other way at things that are not so easy to understand and not so easy to see, then we see things that are different, that we wouldn't have discovered if we didn't look like that. And that way of looking is a great source of unexplored innovation like the story of the dung beetle. <laughs> and the dung beetle is a little beetle who rolls a ball of dirt around. And story goes that some people in ancient Egypt looked really carefully at the behaviors of the dung beetle. And story goes that that was the beginning of the invention of the wheel. So looking at the small things, looking differently, and you will uh, find a world of unexplored innovation. But looking differently also means that you uh, get the essence of details and how important they are. And I asked a designer, Lonneke Gordijn, how this way of looking affected her work. And she told me about the dandelion, and it's a pretty common flower. And she told me how she was intrigued by its structure and its beauty. And she made a beautiful, fragile dandelion light out of her observations. She glued carefully every little seed with its fluffy ending to a LED light. And that design, that light that she crea created, I think, uh, captures the essence of the dandelion, which is a common flower. We see it every day. Uh, but by doing that, we look more closely at yeah, a common flower. So with that in mind, if we go back to the house I'm <coughs> designing, other things suddenly become important for the design, like how it fits in its surroundings and how if it will be comfortable, if it will be timeless, and how the overall look and feel and beauty of the property will be. So suddenly, by looking differently, other things are important to the design. And I hope and believe that when we look at things that are maybe strange and small and are not easy to see, that we then can make other designs, other creations. that we can make creations that are far more balanced. And that we then can give the world true gifts.
Okay. <laughs>